We Make Movies is recorded in front of a live audience in Los Angeles and is hosted by WeMakeMovies.org. We're also very lucky to be sponsored by Aqua Hydrate and Pretzel Crisp. Hello and welcome back to another episode of How We Make Movies. My name's Amanda Lippert. And if you have any interest as a filmmaker in creating your own web series, because it's a very popular topic right now, I've got a very special guest for you tonight. His name is Mark Gant, and he is the co-writer, producer, and star of The Bannon Way. It was a it started out as a film, or does it did it start out as more of a um, web series. It's what well, it was. A, it was based on a script that Jesse Warren, my partner, wrote. Mm -hmm. And once I came aboard, we kind of spent the next six months kind of figuring out what that world would look like as a web series and as a web series and a feature. So it got distributed. Or it got it's distributed on Crackle.com through Sony. Um, very popular web series. And you're going to talk to us today about that process. So please give a warm welcome to Mark Gant. So e each episode, we talk to filmmakers about their personal journeys and their experiences, and we're so lucky to have you here today. Um, not only did you do the Bannon Way, but and made it an incredible success, um, but you also have recently guest starred on Showtime's Dexter. You were a co-star for several episodes on one of my favorite web series, The Guild. Um, and you were also in Once Upon and Leap Year. You've been directing other projects as well. You did Donor. Who was in Donor with you? Um, Trevor Algett and Alexis Boozer were the actors. They're fantastic. And um, Sweet Seven with Shannon Doherty. Mm -hmm. And... What else have you been? You've been doing so much. Well, right now I'm uh, I'm I'm actually going to be shooting this weekend on a sizzle reel for basically uh, a web series, branded web series, kind of a transmedia project where we've got it in place that it can go out to brands like an airline or a travel agency, and at the same time it can be have its own destination site. Then we'll also have uh, an app that you can, you know, check in to your own flights and check in to what she's doing, our main character. We'll have a, a blog. She, or the character is somebody that, that in her 30s, um, crappy job. Uh, she decides to, um, you know, she wants to change her life and catches her, her fiancé cheating on her. So she basically, you know, says, you know, I'm just going to leave my life behind and start over. And so she makes a list of 50 things that she's never going to do again for a whole year. Okay. And she's going to travel around the world and uh, discover um, new clothing designers. Ooh. And so every episode will take place on the plane. And so she will be confronted with one of those 50 things every episode. So you won't show what she's doing. She'll just be on the plane talking about exactly. what she did? Well, she'll, there'll, there'll be, there'll be some elements of what she, she was in Geneva. We've got these chocolatiers where her whole thing is, is like no chocolate. And then, of course, all <laughs> these chocolatiers from Geneva are there around her, t torturing her with the chocolate. Um, but it's about her way of getting you know over her fears, um, you know, making a change in her life. But... The other part is this uh, a web blog that will actually shoot the these interviews with the people that she's going to be meeting. Mm. So um, even though we'll be shooting it all in LA on a on an airplane mock-up, we will be traveling around doing these these videos of actually discovering undiscovered talent. So, oh, that's great. Yeah. That's really great. So let, let's backtrack okay. before you became producer, writer, actor extraordinaire. Uh, how did you get started in the industry? I was very depressed. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I uh, well, when I first started, I was uh, I started out as as a as a PA, as a uh, prop guy. Um, then I got into transportation. I was you know drive shuttle driver for big movies and TV movies. And who's the most famous person you've ever driven around? Um, probably between like Michelle Pfeiffer, Nick Cage. James Woods it was in interesting. Did you ever have anyone, when you were driving, look at you and say, "You got a good look, Mark. You should be an actor." No, and I wish <laughs> they would. I would. That was that was that was what I wanted. Um, that was like kind of this fantasy that I would be discovered by working behind the camera. Um, although when I told people that I wanted to do it, they were very encouraging, mm -hmm. and um, I think 
uh, the first person, the first actress I told was Elizabeth Shue, and she's like, oh, you have to study with my, uh, with my teacher. She's amazing. And so she called um, Ivana up for me, and like I had a meeting, and I was like scared to death. I never acted before, and I did one little improv scene, and it was like all these TV actors in the audience, you know, in the class. And I was horrible, and <laughs> sure. and I never came back. Oh no! You know, to that class because I just I wasn't ready. And then it took several years later till I started. As I said, um, I've heard she's really tough. Did she chew you up and spit you out? Oh yeah, she's <laughs> like, why are you in this class? This is an advanced class. You know, I mean, I don't know how I was there either, but um, because I was recommended. But um, no, so I, I do. I was doing you know props and everything, and then um, when I was. Uh, on a movie, I was working with James Foley, who had done Glengarry Glen Ross mm -hmm. and uh, After Dark, and he had asked me while I was on set, as a prop guy, you know, what do you want to do with your life? And I was like, you know, props, you know? And he's like, <laughs> no, you don't. Change. Yeah, exactly. He's like, no, you don't. You want to do something else. Whatever it is, you just got to write it down, set a goal, and put as much money you're going to have in the bank, and then just do it. That's how the successful people do it. That was the first time I'd ever heard of that, you mm -hmm. know, and so he says, so do that. And then, of course, I didn't do it. And the next day he's like, did you do it? And I said, no. And um, and then the next day I did do it. And I came to the set and I said, oh. so I wrote it down. This is what I want to be. He's like, no, no, no. Let's wait till we get back to L.A. So we got back to L.A. and we sat me down. He's like, all right, what is it? And I said, well, I want to act, write, direct and produce. <laughs> you know, as if it was like a like a like a Christmas list. And um, he's like, OK. Acting sucks, bad choice. Directing, that's the one, because he's a director, of course. He's right. like, writing, nobody gives a shit about the writer. And producer, no thanks. So directing, I'd do directing if I was you. I was like, okay, but I want to kind of do all these things. And um, I even went to, you know, in that six, first six months, um, they actually took off the, the six months because I set this goal, told people, you know, I got my SAG card, I did a play, I did a AFI workshop, I did, a, which is now Film Independent, but it was IFP West at the time. And uh, I had actually had on my thing, it says your name and then what you do. It says actor, writer, director, producer. And the first person that I met said, really, so what have you done? And I, I was like, I just thought this was like a wish list of like what I wanted to do. Because <laughs> yeah. I had never really, you know, was, I had no concept of actually being able to do any of that stuff. I mean, I'd been on set, so I saw people doing it, but I had no idea how much hard work it was going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have any idea, I mean, you just said you didn't know how much hard work it, it was going to be, but did you have any idea that you really could be doing all those things, and not only doing all those things, but all at once, the way you are now on so many projects? Um, no, and, you know, and, and also at the same time, you know, I, I can't and don't do it by myself. Like, if I'm going to do all those pieces... Um, you know, I have a support team, whether it's a writing partner or a producing partner or a director, co-director. Um, but, I mean, right now, there's only one project that I'm actually going to co-direct and act in. This is a big action thing that we're um, in negotiations with right now. And um, But everything else is basically me as a director or me as an actor. Um, because it is, it's, it's, I don't, you know, I look forward to it when I'm, you know, 60 or 70 doing it like Eastwood or you know Clooney I don't know how he does it but you know they're able to you know be both Mel both Gibson sides. Did a Mel Gibson movie. yeah always doing Braveheart movie. I don't know how you yeah. do Braveheart how do you do Braveheart how do you direct that and be in that yeah you're Mel Gibson I guess yeah that's how you yeah. become Mel Gibson yeah exactly <laughs> but um so talk to me more about um how the band and wake came along then you were at this workshop with this little sticker on your Shirt and and then and then what happened from there? Yeah, cut to seven years later. Um, <laughs> I was then I had started studying at the Beverly Hills Playhouse with Milton Katselis, and I was doing a lot of great scenes in class, but I was not um, getting auditions, and I was really frustrated. So um, I told him that I wanted to quit acting and start directing, mm -hmm. and he said, um, "All right." So he wrote down director and actor on a piece of paper with a line and said, "Today you have to make a choice. You can't do the other one." And I said, directing. And he said, all right, well, I think that if you uh, leave acting now, all the same problems you're having as an actor, you're going to have as a director. So I want you to focus on the acting. Give me 10 scenes. I'll give you the scenes to do. You'll work with them just specifically with me, and we'll see what happens. And so that 10 scenes was end up being about 15 scenes, and he had done a private class. And uh, I went from a guy that couldn't even look people in the eye and say I was an actor without crying 
because I had just had, didn't have any belief in myself. It's what I wanted to do, but I had no belief in it to the end where I could say, yes, I'm an actor. Right. And um, so when at that point, there was no auditions. Right. Like I had a great agent who said, you're at your age range. Everybody's already got a pilot or had a series. You know, your casting is just not, you know, it's and just tough. And you've got a great look. And if you're talented, <laughs> nice. it doesn't make sense. You know? Like, but it Thank happens you. to so many actors. You yeah, know? and so that's where I got to the, the point where um, I was in class and one of the acting teachers, Alan Barton, had said, he was talking to another girl and he said, um, you know, build your own door and walk through it. Like, mm -hmm. you're different than your sister. Her career is different than yours. You have to figure it out for yourself. And um, I went home and... You know, prior um, that week, my girlfriend had booked a pilot and a movie for Sony, and I was just like, I'm so happy for you, babe. That's awesome, it's you know? Tears yeah, your because face. it's like I was so frustrated. And, um, and so basically, I, what ended up happening was um, she said to me, Well, why don't you just make your own stuff? You know, you know how to do it. And I was already directing shorts at the time and doing directing scenes in class and so I wrote down you know three different people that were you know writer directors that wanted to work with me and Jesse Warren was on the first on the list and he had had the script that he had um, gave me six months before about a small time thief who was trying to you know um, you know do one last job and you know leave to the you know Canary Islands and um, so we got together and we started looking at how we could maybe do this as a short that could go to Sundance and that could help our career and once we started budgeting what that was going to be, it was like $50,000 to shoot in a bank and do this whole thing. And, yeah. and web series, this was 2007, web series were just starting to come out. And there were a couple ones that IFC had just picked up. And I thought, we can do it so much better than that. You know, we, we, what, our idea is so much better. Right. And um, so we started developing. We got together every day, five days a week. Um, I drove to his house. We stayed there from like 10 to 3. And we just wrote. And we just came up with ideas. And we'd send each other, you know. Uh, versions back and forth and then out of that we started doing the actual writing of what an episode was which we didn't know what that was because there was still no how long is an episode for a web series how did you end up figuring that out well 25 pages apparently is not the the <laughs> length um, which was our first episode yeah, and um, web, they have a but we said it's going to be stand. shorter because it's it's action and um, you know our friend Bailey who had said uh, it was like our mentor through the whole process who was a writer said I've already clicked off after the first page, I said, clicked off. I thought we printed it up for you. And he's like, no, like I'm watching it. I've already clicked off because it needs to, needs to move and you don't have to tell all these details and it's different than a, than a feature and you can't just slowly tell the story. Um, and so what ended up happening is we started to kind of structure it in a way where it's like, okay, maybe they'll be 10 minutes long. Maybe they'll be five minutes. So we made them five minutes. And then we showed a couple of people and they said they're too expensive. Nobody's paying that much money for a web series. Yahoo yeah. was giving like $5,000 per episode. And we hadn't budgeted this, but it was like an action. There's like car chases and, you know, gunfire and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so um, my friend had just sold a film at Sundance, um, a feature, and he didn't get theatrical, but he got video on demand, DVD and international sales. And I thought, why don't we do this as a feature? As a feature right? And then we could sell as a DVD. We could have like the Bannonway.com. People will come there and then we could sell the movie, you know, to recoup our money. And, um, and so we just basically, it made it so much easier for us because we knew how to structure a movie. You know, we just did the three acts and we just split them up. I think at the time it was like six, eight, and six in terms of episodes. And, um, and then we kind of, you know, the brief stories we just shot that around and everybody said it was too expensive right nobody wanted to you know make something with no names and um and so we decided just to like shoot it ourselves so we shot the first two five minute episodes and how, how did you decide to i mean cut it down to five minutes because that's what you could afford well we had these the episodes were basically five minute episodes we had the first act uh -huh. written and okay. so we thought the way we did the band away too is we had a, a principle that my grandfather had passed on to me so in each each episode I either transgressed it or I obeyed it so we right. want to put these two together so you could see me and the principal right. and um, and then from that we we cut a trailer out of that and um, and then that's what how we kind of pitched it around town and we're able to you know lucky at that time Sony and Crackle were looking for the exact thing that we were that we were doing that's really lucky um, very lucky you talked about um, I read in on your blog, I believe it was, you said that, what was the exact quote, it's somewhere, that you um, kind of took for granted how lucky you were in your experience 
when it hindered you when it came to making future projects and giving advice on how to you know find that success yeah you want to talk about that well yeah no not really <laughs> no um no but i do i mean i think um I think, uh, I mean, Valerie could probably mention it as well. It's like anytime you've made somebody, anybody that's made something, um, and there's you know been people that like it, or you've gone this whole journey to get it to you know the holy grail, you know all the experiences of why it's not going to happen mm -hmm. for 99% of the people doing it. You know, for all those other reasons, you know, just kind of a perfect kind of thing. So I basically thought, as I when we finished, I spent you know, the first seven months of, of 2010, you know, pitching three or four projects that were bigger than Bantamweight, because I was like, I'm going to do something bigger. I'm going right. to take it to the next level. And nobody was ready. Nobody, just like they weren't ready for Bannon when we were first trying it. Right. And um, so I really started to, you know, I found myself doing half the work that I was should have done. And, you know, we weren't shooting things like we were doing with Bannon. We were kind of like getting lazy going, well, we just have the band away here's the feature that's what we did yeah. you know and you know do we have to do it again and um it was a really kind of crappy What's the short attitude answer to that question yeah yes you have to do it every time yeah you have to do it every every time so on these two projects when i just finished shooting last month i mean we shot a 10 minute pilot and we're gonna cut a little teaser out of it but we're more focused on getting the pilot out to studios and networks and hulus and yahoo and different places and and get it made that way because we're going to show them because I, and it's the thing I always told everybody is like you have to show people you know um, but it's uh, it's it, it, it just goes back to like you know I'm the reason I wanted to be an actor was to be famous and loved and not have to do anything and then, <laughs> you know what I mean that's what You're that in so my mind honest. that's seriously I mean I, I had this like this fantasy of like leaving my house from the hills and my Range Rover down to Sunset, seeing my face on the billboard, drive to LAX, going to Paris, but I had no desire to do any of the work to actually do <laughs> all the stuff that that takes. You so know? what finally inspired you to do all that work if you were pain? No, I mean, well, it, you it just couldn't take the pain anymore. Well, yeah, I mean, at some point, uh, you know, I realized that. Um, nobody's going to do it for me right you know and as great as the agents and managers i had and people believed in me and they got me out it was um you know i could keep doing the 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 actor route of just showing up to an audition Hit and pavement. yeah and keep doing that or you know i can fulfill myself as uh, an artist and create and so that's what i'm trying to do now and, and carrying less on a, on a teeny bit basis that people don't love me like, you know, like I want them to. But I, I, I do feel like I'm being fulfilled, you know, the artistic side of me of being able to create my own projects and do what I want to do. And um, do you keep tally on um, views? How many people have viewed the web series? Um, when, 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 uh, when we were doing it, yeah, I mean, that was, I mean, it's funny because just whether it's an independent thing or even though Sony was doing it, um, they didn't have the money to market it. So, you know, it was Jesse and I on right. Facebook and Twitter and, you know, and getting our, the word out there and showing up to any place that would like screen it or do a teaser or do a panel. I mean, we were, we were whores, like anything <laughs> that we could do to get people to see it. And, um. So now I haven't, I mean, I, w the last time we checked, I, you know, it was probably around 14 or 15 million on Crackle, but they stopped counting them basically because mm -hmm. they don't you want people to know. You just have too many fans now. No, 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 no. Too no, many no. people love you. No, no. But, it's, <laughs> but I think that um, the social media has really, you know, helped um, my acting in my career is that it's, you know, and it's a full-time job is like to, you know, kind of keep my face out there and keep right. trying to, you know, all the things that I booked since then, you know, have all been a result of, you know, me kind of posting something about what I'm doing or my blog, you know, mm -hmm. casting director said, I just read your blog. And I was like, really? <laughs> Did I say <laughs> anything I bad about you, yeah. you know, but that's, you know, putting myself out there and, you know, keeping visible, um, you know, is one thing, but I realized that that still only I'm still still waiting for somebody to do something for me. So yeah. that's why we, I just keep want to, you know, keep creating stuff and I'm doing stuff. I want to have a, a short that's based on a feature that my girlfriend's going to be in. And originally I was going to be in it and then I just want to direct it. So I'll actually be casting that and want to do that at the end of this year. And that's more like a passion thing. 
Um, but all these other things are things that excite me and tur and turn me on and get me excited because it's a full time job to do anything. I mean, to do any production. Like if I'm not and I've and I've started to do things where it's like I think this is, feels good, you know. And people, someone come to me with something or I have an idea and it's it, but if it's not a hundred percent, I'm willing to you know stay up till three o'clock in the morning finishing something before I go to bed to wake up at seven. Then I can't do it anymore because I, I realize that it's. It's a, it's, um, it's, a, it's takes my soul. Like uh, you have to, you have to love what I you're, did that what recently. You're doing. I took a paid project, and it's the first time I did a paid pro producing project. Mm -hmm. And uh, see, there's a big difference between doing something for money versus doing something because your heart's right. really in it. And I felt that sense of resistance that you just don't get. Like if my heart's in it, I, I'll do the same thing. I'll stay up two weeks straight without sleeping. Just yeah. To, you know, get it to where I want it to be. And people will get behind you if you're if this is what you want to do. And that's that's what you know. With um, when we did ban the before we sold it. I mean, um, Teddy could tell you. I mean, we 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 charmed the shit out of everybody because we were so passionate about our project. Like mm -hmm. everybody that we talked to was like, okay, I can't really help you, but you guys really think this is gonna get made? <laughs> we're like, yeah. It you is. know, and, and we it. did. We saw the vision of it being made, and when it's hap when it happened, it was just kind of like I was on set on like the 18th day, and you know there was you know 60 people on set, and the electrician who was like a day player was like, "Hey, Mark," and I was like, "Hey, like wow, all these people are here to you do Jesse and I's you know vision, like us sitting there in his in his house on the you know on the couch writing this out." So. It's pretty crazy. Talk about um, I know the the feature or the project you're working on now that takes place on the airplane. You did a Kickstarter for that and mm -hmm. raised eleven thousand um, dollars. How did you raise money for the Bannon Way? Uh, Jesse's wife's uh, career. <laughs> we we basically used our own money. Um, yeah. You know, I used my resources with uh, from my you know days as a prop guy. I, we were able to pull city cam operator and uh, stunt coordinator that I had worked with and the DP. Everybody, majority of the crew worked for free or nothing, and um, so we kept it as a really low budget. And then this point, what this one is like, you know, I can't. I couldn't fund every single project that I'm doing, and right now, like I have about nine projects that, you know, all in various stages, and it's like I can't, you know, my I want to be able to say, I, oh yeah, I can just here's five thousand for this or here's that, but you know, right. my day job is I'm still a prop guy, you know, <laughs> and you know, acting and commercials and and stuff like that. But um, the Kickstarter thing when they when these the creators. Um, Steve Peros and Sybil Timchini and approached me about this project just as coffee. They wanted to know how to do a web series. They had done features before, and um, I, after they pitched it to me, I was like, "God, this is such a great show! Like, I love the character. I love her as the character." And um, so I went home and I read the scripts and I was like, "God, this is amazing! I do not want to do something that I'm not directing or acting in." But I said yes. I said, I'd love to do this if you guys would have me. And I think it's been the best choice because these guys have been fantastic. Sybil's like the female version of me. She, I can't send an email fast enough before her getting back at the response. And we're, you know, and the Kickstarter thing came up because we didn't have the money, but we had a director. Right. We had reached out to um, a big director and just for advice. And he said, I, you know, I can't do it, but, you know, here's somebody that's great. He's my production designer. And so we met with the production designer, and he's like, well, I just directed this film, and I'm doing another film next year. I'd love to do this. And we said, great. And he's like, yeah, except I'm going out of town September 16th. And then we're like, shit. And this is like the last week of July. So we said, let's do it. Let's do it the you know, first week of September. And we all left that meeting, and then we got on the phone, and we're like, what, with what money? Like we didn't, ha we you know they had investors they'd worked with before, but what money? And uh, I love that nobody had even considered that. We considered it, <laughs> yeah. and we, we, I mean, we, I mean, we weren't that stupid. We yeah. considered it, but we'd always thought, well, when we get to that point that we're going to do it, we'll figure out how we're going to like either independently raise the money, go to financiers that they had worked with before, our family or whatever. And uh, and then when they mentioned, uh, Sybil had mentioned, what about Kickstarter? Now this is somebody that's like never done a Kickstarter campaign. She's like only knows of one person that's ever done one. Mm -hmm. In my world, I you know I get four or five a week, you know, of right. Kickstarter campaigns, and I feel Good like friends. everybody, you know, is doing them, and you know, is everybody burnt out? And nobody has money, and you know, do we really want to do it? That was my first reaction. I was like, Nah, I don't think so. And then she's like, Why? And I was like, Well, and I told her all these things. She's like, 
well, I only know one person and she, she raised it in, you know, 30 days and she raised 15,000. So I started to think, well, maybe we should start to do it. So, um, that was what, that was kind of the decision to do it. And, um, and we basically put a budget together, what it was like the lowest that we could do this for if we shot it in one day mm -hmm. and, um, and shot it, you know, in a, in, on the 7D and this whole thing, and then end up um, coming up with a number of 7,500, which we felt like we could raise probably in 21 days mm -hmm. because we were going to be shooting in 28. So <laughs> um, we did that, and we were going to do a video and the whole thing. And she said, well, we're just going to go to my friends and family and people, and I don't want to do a video. And I said, well, everybody does a video. Like, that's how they do it. And she was like, I know, I don't really want to do that. And I'm like, Okay, and it didn't matter because we had put a lot of artwork and stuff and showed like what the mock website would look like and the Twitter account and the app and all that kind of stuff and they're brilliant writers and they came up with great copy for everything and um, we'd already done a presentation deck for the show that we had pitched to Sundance for their new, their, they have a new media lab and so we were kind of already in that zone right. and, um, and, uh, and I had never done a Kickstarter campaign except for one to raise some money for donor to, to finishing funds. So I wasn't expecting, you know, my friends to, to come out. And I had friends that were, you know, old friends that had given me more money than I'd ever thought. Oh, friends wow. that I'd owed money to gave me oh, money, no. <laughs> you <laughs> know, you from the past. More. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I, I'm still paying you back that $900 like every month. He's like, I know, Aww. you know, and, um, and then, you know, more importantly, it was like a whole bunch of people that were not really, you know, in my in my first circle that I would say, oh, th these people for sure. Right. But instead, it were people that I had supported, right. or I had said, hey, you know, I saw their web series and I, you know, supported it when it came out. And so it was this interesting. Um, the web community really supported me and really pitched in some some ten dollars and some two hundred fifty dollars, and it was just really great to see the the community all you know all sticking together to do it. So. It was funny. It was like I was at, at one point I was I was giving fifty dollars to somebody. Somebody else had just given me fifty for his show. Like, and we were doing this whole thing back and forth. And it's like I can do fifty. I can't do seventy five hundred. You know right. what I mean? So that's what the great thing about it, the crowdsourcing is we can all little pieces can make the whole thing. Yeah, absolutely. But that's not what you did for the band. Away. you guys self funded. Yeah. And. Um, were able to make it on far less budget than you thought you would just by pulling resources and pulling favors. Mm -hmm. um, at what point did you guys start looking for either investors or sponsors or some production house to pick it up? Did you know what you were looking for exactly or did you think that, well, if we could just make this, maybe somehow the money will appear that we'll keep making it? Well, the second part of just the money will appear is like my default that somebody <laughs> will save me. So that was always there, kind yeah. of like hopefully it'll happen. But I mean, we were we were we were searching early on. We had a full on business plan after seven months of working. We had the six episodes. We had the first season. We basically um, started creating a pitch website, which basically was like a fake website of what the show would look like, mm -hmm. and we had. You know, part of our concept for Ban Away was the G, uh, BMW films, and so Clive Owen was the lead in these these like shorts that like famous directors did for two million dollars a piece, and we said that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> and so the whole first website had Clive Owen and Don Cheadle and like one picture of me at the top, but like <laughs> we were pitching it like, oh, this is the kind of show, this is the look. We showed the videos and had the characters and the breakdown and stuff, and. Um, and basically everybody said it was too expensive, you know, that right. there's no, I mean, the budget we were looking for at that point was um, around 450000 to do the whole, the whole season. And nobody was spending that kind of money. And so, you know, we went back to, well, maybe we should, you know, pitch it to different places. So we met with agents and we met with a couple investors and everybody said, yeah sorry you know you you know my the the guy who ended up becoming our agent and end up selling it for us was you know had said and i've said this all the time but it's like you know sorry you're not george clooney and you're not steven soderbergh no one's gonna give you guys the money and once we were finished he's like i want to buy it let's sell it you know he was the first person so, so you really had to he had to see it to believe it yeah he didn't he didn't believe it and actually when we showed him the trailer um 
he was asking, I would, you know, kind of administering my career all the time, I would send him like email updates pretty much every month. Like, hey, we're going to shoot it in two months. Hey, we're shooting it next month. Hey, we just shot it, you know, or here's a still from, here's a couple screen grabs. And because um, I knew he was somebody that could actually help us sell it. And um, as we were getting close into color correcting and stuff like that, he had said, I want to see it. I want to see a rough cut. Let me mm-hmm. see it. And I was like, no, I've got to wait till it's done. And he's like, I went to USC film school. Like, I've seen rough cuts. Like, I know how to do it. I'm like, it has to be done. It has to be done. And so we finished the trailer first, and we sent it to him. And, and that's when he said he loved it. And then he said, but, you know, if, I mean, if the episodes don't, you know, I'm afraid that the episodes aren't going to look that great compared to the trailer. Right. And we were saying the trailer was, like, okay compared to the episodes. Right. And um, so we were, you know, and we spent a lot of time and energy um, you know, when we were casting it and shooting it and having the, the right team on board and to, you know, to make it the best that we could be. And we weren't going to just kind of half-ass it towards the end. And so when we finally finished it and color corrected and did everything and then showed him, um, he was like, oh, I get it. I get it now. I can I can see it, you know. And and to this day, I just this, this one I'm doing right next weekend, I, I pitch it to him. I said, so do you know any other, pe- other brands or brand companies I can, you know, you know, get some meetings with and he's like no one's gonna buy that why are you doing that it's like no why are you involved in this like i don't get it and i was like oh perfect it's gonna work it's gonna sell because <laughs> you know, and, and, and i and i told him i was like i said well anytime you say no that means yes and he goes well we'll see but um he's not aging anymore he's a producer and doing stuff but it's like you know that was we were joking about the no productions it's like you know everybody says no you know it's you were, you were saying how you were going to name your production company no Productions. yeah because yeah. everywhere along the way everybody kept telling us no we can't do it even the dp was like just shoot the trailer why shoot the two episodes we said because i think that the two episodes will sell it like they need to see the acting and that was our thing is like when we got to the point when we finished those two episodes in the trailer um our goal like the f- fantasy of being a tv series and everything was right there in front of us because we were taking meetings about that and the goal was me as an actor a vehicle for me as an actor mm-hmm. and for him as a director the writing and producing were you know kind of ancillary at the time even though he's a writer director for this project it was him as a director and me as an actor so if we sold it as a tv series no guarantee I'd be the actor. He would definitely not direct the pilot. And right. so we thought, let's do our thing so that we can do it. And, um, you know, I'm glad we did. But it was, you know, it's it's uh, it's difficult when you get to that point where money is being talked. You're like, well, do I want to sell this and I could do something else later? But it was important for you to keep it and for it to be your project and yeah. not just to sell it and give it to someone else and take the cash. Yeah. Because my, I was still trying to see if people really wanted to see me as an actor, if that was if that was going to work, you know, or if should I just go back to props, you know. <laughs> Which you could always do later. Which I can do, and I'm still doing. It's great. I love it. <laughs> I'm good. I'm really good. <laughs> but what about Sony? When did they come in with picture? Um, when we finished the trailer on the two episodes, he had um, we sent him the, about 12 copies of the DVD, and he sent them out to basically all the studios, anybody that was buying at the time, Sony, Warner Brothers, and ABC, Fox, um, Generate was doing stuff at the time. And um, and that was basically, you know, kind of this rounds that we were able to like set up meetings and meet with them. And, you know, since we had the episodes, they could see what the series was. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it was between NBC and Sony at the time. And Sony basically, you know, they had the money. NBC wanted to shop it around and, you know, get a brand attached and do it. They were really passionate about it. But at the end of the day, it was like, Sony's like, here's the money, go shoot it, and we're not going to fuck with it too much. We're like, okay. So, um, you know, and we had no idea, you know, you know you're know, you making a deal with the devil, in a sense, with the studio, because we had never done, we never even, I mean, we'd just done that. We'd never right. even worked with the studio. So that began more no's, where it was like every week we were doing, jumping through hoops, even though we had an amazing creative team there, and they were so supportive, it was just, you know, we say we could do it for this amount of money, not knowing if we could do it, because we just heard, like, that's the green light number. If you could do it for this, they'll green light the thing. So you're like, thing. yes, 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 we, we could will. totally do it for that. And then we wrote it, and it was, like, twice as long and twice as expensive. <laughs> you know, and the line producer was like, so... When I did that first budget on the first six episodes, is that how you came up with the budget for the whole series? I was like, yeah, I just kind of, like multiplied and she goes that you can't do that that's not even you're budgeting something that's not even a script 
And so we end up having to, you know, back end of this number by rewriting and then rebudgeting, rebudgeting and rebudgeting. And she kept saying, and I kept saying, well, tell us what's more, what's the most expensive thing? I'll, we'll start like cutting that back. She's like, everything, everything is the most expensive, like less actors, less cars, less locations, like cut, 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 you know? And we're like, that's the story. We can't cut the story, you know? And, and it began this whole thing. We had this huge parkour uh, sequence that was amazing. This episode was like amazing. And they, no one still made this a great parkour show. We were like thinking this is exactly what we want to do. So it was like backing into that, that number and doing it in a very weird way. And now um, we said after that, I was like, we're never going to do that again. Like a only parkour scene? No, well, oh. no, I want to do that. So, um, no, doing, um, you know, saying we can do it for a number and then having to write to that number. Um, well, now you know. Well, now I know that it doesn't work. And then, of course, I'm about to do it in the exact same thing in these one of these deals because we don't have the script written. We have the concept, and we kind of know what the green light number is, and we know that we can do that. Right. We know how to do it that way, but it's just it's not ideal. But you know, do we, our time? You know, we're we're talking about it's like our we don't have time to go and write the script to the point that we can then give it to somebody because we're doing so many other projects. So like it's now there. So let's like take advantage of what's there in front of us. And so we're just relying on the fact that we know how to do that, and we have a great team that can keep slapping our hand and saying less characters, less cars, less locations. <laughs> and you know, now, and at the end of the, that, that process, he basically, Bailey, who came on as our producer at the end, uh, you know, when it was basically a third over the budget and we thought there was no possible way we could cut anymore. Mm -hmm. We suggested cutting it in half, doing it as first season, two seasons, you know, two seasons. And they said, no, it has to be beginning, middle, and end. It has to be this. And like Sony was like, then they just kind of put the hammer down. That's it. And we thought there's no way we can do anything else. And, um, and Bailey came to us and said, so this is the come to Jesus moment, boys. You know, <laughs> do you want to make this or not? You know, and we thought, well, we could keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting for our vision. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I said, well, yeah, we do. And Jesse's like, yeah, I want to make that. And they're like, well, we can't make that that way. So he basically had suggested doing it all in one location. And we found Lacey Studios. And we basically went and scouted it like three or four times and then went back and rewrote it to f scenes to fit in Lacey Studios or around Lacey Studios so mm -hmm. that we could shoot, you know, 19 days all in one location rather than at this beautiful mansion that we'd already scouted that was gorgeous and like up here down in Long Beach and all these different things all had to just, the world just became smaller. And at the end of the day, you know, um, we would have loved to have done that, right. the other thing, but you know, and some of these. And you will one day yes. when you have that budget. Yes. That, that's always the struggle, I think, between the line producer and the director like mm -hmm. what you want to do and keeping your artistic vision and, and what you're actually able to do. Yeah. And uh, I think that if you can get through that without divorcing each other, yeah, exactly. you know, like that'll exactly. keep the project together. Um, now that you've had so much success with your project, you are um, teaching a workshop. Um, do you talk about in your workshop the science of attracting the right sponsors? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that when we started uh, the project, uh, because B the BMW Films was such a you know influence for us, you know we thought of um, you know who was going to watch it. It was kind of a, a weird thing because Jesse, uh, we're totally different. Like I like foreign films more than anything else. Jesse, I mean he likes foreign films, but he, like he plays video games. He's like mastered every single video game. He loves action films. He loves you know great stories. I mean he's 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 a film buff, so he loves everything. But he has his passion, which are video games. And so we created this character who like was into video games and that kind of spawned this idea of who's our audience. It's going to be like 18 to 34 year old males mm -hmm. that are going to be online. Who's online? That's what we were trying to figure out. I was like, what's a web series? And like, who's online and who's watching shows online? It's like, well, guys of video games love watch, go into here. Here's the sites that they're doing that. And so we kind of started focusing on that. And then of course, women and then cars and, you know, and sunglasses and things like that. So when we were putting it all together, um, we started focusing on those things and as a prop guy I knew how to get product placement stuff so I went to Ray-Ban, we got Ray-Ban, this is all for the pilot and then yeah. um, went to Mac and had Apple give us a whole bunch of you know permission to use all their stuff mm -hmm. and 
And then Jaguar was like our kind of, you know, thing is that I wanted, you know, there's a Jaguar parked out in front of Jesse's house, like the neighbor's house. And I was like, that's the car. That's, that's <laughs> Neil Bannon's car. And um, he's like, yeah, I'm not much into cars. I guess yeah, that could be that car. It's like, no, that's the car. Like, that's the <laughs> car. And um, so I reached out to Jaguar and I was able to get um, them to give us a Jaguar for free. They dropped it off on the like flatbed, like downtown with like the scrappy crew of like 20 of us. You know, remember that, Teddy, right? Is like backed it up, parked it right there, and then they drove. They said, "So we'll just call us when you're done with it." I'm like, "How do we get it home?" Like, I mean, they just left it here. You know, it was like one location. So um, it was fantastic. So we were able to do that. So, but that pitch website that we had that had the Jaguar that had Clive Owen that had the stuff. When Jag, when I contacted Jaguar, they knew what the show was mm -hmm. and they saw who their audience was going to be and they were because willing to do it. Put the marketing together yeah. in advance. Yeah, that we really cute. did it backwards. We kind of came up with the story, and then as we, each thing, we were like, okay, well, we gotta have some cool sequence where it looks like a video game, and he's like doing this thing, and there's like, it's in reverse, and then there's a way that's almost first person. And then, you know, another thing was like, oh, well, there's a sexy girl, so we gotta have, you know, the Maxim model thing, you know? Yeah. I tortured myself to put that, put myself through those scenes, but oh, yeah. Oh, you poor thing, yeah. you yeah. poor thing. <laughs> yeah. If you haven't seen the show, almost every scene, he's practically being jumped by some gorgeous model. My girlfriend said, like, I'm on page 35 and you've slept with three women. <laughs> <laughs> and she's in it. She plays one of the assassin trio that, like, is going after to kill me. And she's like, and I'm the only one you don't kiss. <laughs> I was like, Jesse wrote that. I didn't, I didn't write that. Well, we've got some audience questions here. Uh, this one is from Rena, says from the Real Girls Guide. Uh, is that a web series? Um, she asked, what are your thoughts on the potential for web series to monetize and what needs to change to make this happen in your opinion? Oof. I don't know if there's enough time. Um, <laughs> well, I would, you know, I think that, I think it's slowly going to a place where, um, there is more money coming with advertisers. There's more people, you know, um, more eyeballs. It's like all about getting eyeballs to the show. And then, you know, if you're doing some ad revenue share with Blip or, you know, or YouTube or something, being able to, you know, make money that way. But then you have to have, like, massive amounts of hits. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the branding, you know, branded web series, you know, that's not, that's, that's what my friend had said to me very pointedly the other day. is like, that's not coming from creators. Creators aren't making branded web series. It's the, it's the ad agency. Right. The ad agencies have their own digital thing and they're going out to the brand saying hey this is concept for the series mm -hmm. and you know independent filmmakers are making them but they're not the ones able to sell their thing i think mm -hmm. once once all that kind of goes through in the next couple of years when we see enough shitty branded web series that some ad agency created then the brands will be able to say look i see this concept that I, I love this this is the audience that i want and you know let me let me let me fund this so that i can you know do that you um, have no problem picking up the phone asking for product placement. Is it um, possible for people just to call those companies directly and say, I've got this great product, take a look at it. I think that we could co-brand this and make it, you know, something that your audience would really love and yeah. get your product in front of them? Yeah, but go to the, to the publicist, the, the PR firm. Okay. Because the PR firm actually has money. The ad agency has already taken that money for the next year and a half. They've already spent it. So they don't have any other money. And they don't want to do anything that's not their creative because they've already spent all this, you know, millions of dollars figuring out what the best for the brand. The publicist actually has money. So you can reach the, you know, the, the, the PR firm, you know, easily because they have press releases. So you can go to Google and figure out, oh, this is the brand. It's Red Bull. So let me do look for Red Bull press release. And there's your contact. And then you reach out to that person and you find out who, you know, who the, the you know, who's in charge of marketing for the, for the PR person, for that PR firm. And then you can reach out to them and say, hey, this is what I'm, you know, this is what I have. Now, I highly suggest that it's, you know, what you're showing them is the best thing that you think you can do at that point right. and not like, well, it's almost there. We haven't totally color corrected yet. We haven't quite got all the stuff together and we just have the idea, like it needs to be done. You get one shot with that person to right. see, if, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, you know, everybody that I know that's ever, you know, I mean, um, Felicia Day, when she did the Guild, she was the one who reached out to, um, 
uh, Microsoft. She was the one who reached out to Verizon. That was her, like, making those calls. So they didn't just call her out of the blue. No. And same thing with um, Ileana Douglas when she did Easy to Assemble. It was a pilot that, got, that didn't get picked up. And so she went out and said, well, I'm going to make it myself. And they gave it back to her. And she went to, like, every store in town. She went to, like, Marshall's. She went to Bed Bath & Beyond. She went to, like, the top, you know, met with the people, got, found their emails, met with them, and said, this is my show. And, um, you know, I think Ikea was, like, the last one on the list where she was like, okay, fuck it, Ki Ikea. Like, they're not going to do it anyway. Let's just go there, you know. And they, they said yes, so. So you never know. No. Um, this one is from Alice. She asked, um, what is the line between keeping visible and spamming? And what's a good first step for someone with actors um, and a script? And what's a good, this is three questions, and what's a good first step for someone with just an idea? Okay, let me do the first one. Okay, so what's the line between keeping visible and spam? I have no idea because <laughs> my when I was doing this Kickstarter campaign, my friends literally like when I, you know, hang out with some friends or something, I'd walk up. They're like, "All right, what is the number that we have to donate to stop the fucking posts? What is it?" Because I've already, like, I've unfriended you on Facebook, and I'm going to friend you back after this campaign. Like, I can't, my, my whole news feed is all about, thank you, so-and-so, thank you, you know what I mean? I don't know. I mean, it's like, I hate doing it. I yeah. hate, you know, trying to be, you know, I'd rather just, again, have somebody do it for me. You know, just somebody just give me a job. But um, I think you find a balance. I think, you know, I try, when I'm doing that, I'm obviously, you know, like, unapologetically trying to raise money to try to do something. But, um, you know, I'm trying to also engage with other people and other filmmakers. So I'm constantly, you know, because of, you know, kind of the community I have, people send me stuff all the time. And if I like their stuff, I will repost it or I'll tweet about it and, you know, kind of begin a conversation that way. So, so for me, I'm trying to do more of, and plus I like helping people. That's why I do the workshop. Like I like helping people, you know. So if I see something I like, I want to help other people do that and um, and so I'm trying to balance it out between you know when I was doing the band away it was the same thing it was like it was all about me because I didn't realize I didn't I was just trying to get people to see it you know right. and uh, when I'm doing the funding it's all about me because I'm trying to raise the money but I'm trying to find a balance in between where I'm not obnoxious Mark Gant you know posting about <laughs> you know you know I don't try not to do like I had a great audition doing my thing you know whatever right. but like you know I'm trying to you know that's why I do the, the blog helps me to stay visible but also you know reveal more honestly about who I am mm -hmm. and I don't have to pretend to be somebody else right. you know and and then the second two parts of that really quickly because uh, we're running out of time is uh, what's the first good stuff for someone who has the actors and has the script find a place like we make movies that have no <laughs> seriously because yeah. I mean you know because um, Chad and Kendall when they were first were telling me about it I was like wow this is so amazing because like you know you have the the uh, community and I think that's what I'm always you know um, I think actors and writers specifically um, have a hard time because they think I know how to act like I understand how a production runs but I don't know how to do it and I don't really know you know how to you know crew people or something and writers you know I feel that are just writers that just want to sell the script to you know the studio or sell the pilot don't really want to do that extra work that they don't know how to do and I realize that those people when they can start to build a team of creators around them that can support them um, a lot of things can get made because you need a great script and you need great actors and DP can just go shoot crappy sh shit but it doesn't matter I mean he needs that storyteller you know he needs the storyteller he needs great actors and the same thing with the director and same thing with sound and lighting and you know everybody wants to work on a great project and right. so um, I'm always suggesting you know working on other people's projects for free getting to getting to know you know if there's a, a show that I that I like I'll find out the first thing I do is find out who shot it who directed it you know who's you know if I like the, the makeup effects who's the makeup effects and I just have like a um, a spreadsheet that I just keep writing people's and I have names in there on my computer of different crew, different people that I want to work with. So I'm kind of building my team all the time because I can't do it by myself. I mean, right. sometimes I think I have to, but <laughs> I, you know, but at the end of the day, I can't. I, I need I need people. 
um, and their skills to tell me that I can't do something. So it'll force me to do it more and also <laughs> see it in a more creative way. And it's always better. So you're a rebel. You like hearing no, I it sounds like. I guess. I don't think I just like, I don't think I do, but I, it feels like everything I come up against, you know, um, is, you know, I must because I wouldn't be an actor. I wouldn't be a director. I mean, that's just, you're asking for no, you know? <laughs> you did choose a... Uh yeah. unlikely profession for being so insecure is stupid <laughs> okay we've got to wrap it up i've got two questions really quick before we go um one is how do you spend most of your time like what's your daily routine and how do you stay so organized with all the projects that you do handle and still having to have a day job and still, still taking other creative jobs on the side uh, let's see um i usually start really early um i'm usually up by around six um a little prayer and meditation in the morning usually centers me. And then I do a little writing. There's a great site called 750words.com. I use that site. Yeah. I love, I go there, you know, um, pretty consistently and um, like to play, have the game with it for the, you know, the month thing. So I'm writing and that helps me get all the crap out of my head. And um, th once that's done, I kind of start making my list. I have, um, I think I was telling you that I have, there's a great, um, uh, online site called Tootly Do, which mm -hmm. basically you can put files and folders and different projects and stuff. So basically, I have about 20 folders and the, the projects, and you know, if it's like my photography or you know, generating income, so it's me as a prop guy trying to get work or my um, you know, which projects would I have to do next? And so then I'll kind of uh, since I, you know, you kind of know what's like on the, you know, if there's something, you know, these are the things I'm doing. So I kind of already have those lists if I have an audition or something. But um, I really start to streamline um, what projects. I do the thing right now with my projects where I'm like make three different lists. It's like, does it bring me joy? Will it actually get done? <laughs> Will it help my career? And then the last one is kind of like, you know, will it, um, will it make me money? So if I'm looking at those four and I'm kind of checking off things, you know, I can kind of determine which is a project I should be pushing more forward and try to get another creator on board, another producer. Um, and so, I'm, you know, throughout my day, I'm, I'm going through that list and I'm trying to focus on only a couple of the projects I'm doing and then something will come and I'm like, okay, that's my focus now and I need to be focusing on that right. and still try to get these things done. But um, my girlfriend would say, if you asked her, you know, how does, what does Mark do? How, how does Mark do his day? It's like in front of my computer. Cause like that's, you know, if I'm not out doing something, I'm, you know, I'm there trying to, you know, email somebody every day about. You're constantly communicating. Yeah, I'm constantly, constantly communicating with people. That's how I, we got the, the thing with Sony. It's like I just emailed him every month. Like, this is what we're doing. I'm constantly, you know, mm -hmm. probably spamming. <laughs> probably the, spamming. The last question, because I know you've got to go to, is uh, what advice would you give to someone who's trying to get in a web series off the ground? Um, I think there's a couple things. One is, you know, um, bless you. Uh, find a, you know, whatever it is that you're going to create, it's something that you feel passionate about. Mm -hmm. Like you have to just love what you're doing because it's a full-time job, either raising the money, which I just, you know, with the Kickstarter thing is like, it's a full-time job. It's like when people say they got married, like that whole thing setting up to get married, like it's like a production. It's like the whole production and like, you know, you have to be willing to give everything for that. And then the shoot and then after the shoot and post-production and then you have to be she willing to give your whole it. life you know to just getting people to see it and mm -hmm. spamming and doing whatever you can to get people <laughs> to see the the project so it has to be something that you love and you believe in and the second thing is you know is to think backwards and and valerie mentioned it when you're talking about that it's like you know i think filmmakers um need to be thinking that this is a you know it is the film business and so what is the business of it mm -hmm. you know and who's my audience how am I going to market this before I've even started writing? Like I got to know how I'm going to like sell this thing. Otherwise, you know, there's nothing wrong with like creating your own projects, you know, mm -hmm. and, and doing something. And there'll be things where, you know, people just did, I mean, Felicia Day did her show, the guild because she was like, you know, frustrated with her acting career <laughs> and she was addicted to video games. And she's like, I'm just going to create a show about a girl addicted to video games. And right, you know, and she did, and, and she was so passionate about it, and that was something that, um, that kept her going, has kept her going into, like, I think they just finished the sixth season. Yeah. So, 
and now you know. she's producing seven other web shows. Oh, yeah, I just, I just and talked. She's she, on another and she's TV a studio, show. like Valerie was saying. It's like she has Geek and Sundry. She has, she is a studio head of her own channel, mm -hmm. and she's like, I am shooting seven shows at the same time, and I'm doing my vlog, and we're getting ready to do the Guild. It's like. It's like full on, but she loves what she's doing, you know, and Which you have good. to love. Yeah, exactly. I bet now she doesn't even have time for video games. <laughs> no, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> all right, well, that's all we have time for this evening. Thank you so much again, Mark, for coming in. So you've got your workshop. Where can people find out more about the workshop? The workshop, I have a site called GantWorkshops.com, which is G-A-N-T-T, workshops.com. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to be doing a couple different things over the next, uh, probably in two months, once this, these projects are done. Um, doing more of like a clinic where it's maybe five or six people and like literally take everybody from every step what they need to do mm -hmm. and then everybody else in the group can kind of pitch in in terms of what they're doing and hopefully it's people that are you know someone's a, a director that wants to do it someone's an actor wanting to do it so we get people that are that are from different areas of the business you know trying to make a project so by the end of it you're like oh shit I know every here's like 30 things I need to do right um, and then, um, then I'm going to do probably uh, more one-on-one -on -one consulting with people because I feel like I can help more projects that way and get people, you know, going because it's sometimes just the beginning of like I don't, I don't even know where to start. Kind right, of thing. right. And then you have the show is uh, the Bannon Way is on Crackle.com, mm -hmm. and then all of your other projects will be updated on your website yeah. markgant.com. It's Mark with a K and um, Gant with two T's. Yes. All right. So check him out online. Feel Follow free to him spam on. me. Go yeah, ahead, spam, me. spam him is email. You put your email on your website, which yeah. nobody does anymore. I was like, if I needed to stalk you, yeah. I could. <laughs> so, but thank you, yeah. thank you so much again. For, I'm not going to stalk him. I'm not going to stalk him. Everybody, give a nice warm round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you. And cut.